today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, very simple pendant. Um, it's just put together with one mil wire, 0.4 millimeter weaving wire, and some absolutely gorgeous smoky quartz eight millimeter rounds. Now, essentially, you could make this pendant as well with a cab, but um, I thought be quite nice to actually have pendants that uh, utilizes just beads and you can add in as many as you want I've just used two for accents and um, but you can feed them in um, wherever you like okay so let's get started I'm going to talk you through the uh, materials and tools required for this project right so this is what we're going to be needing today so for the base wires i've used one millimeter uh, copper wire this is rose gold plated but obviously any color will work uh, then for the weaving wire it's the 0.4 now if you wanted to recreate this piece using um, different wires you could for instance use 0.8 millimeter as your base and then 0.4 would also work for your weaving wire if you want to go finer you could probably go with your point three so that would all work um, this is just for demonstration purposes so that's what I've used all right so for the rounds um, again size you know um, is variable you can use the point eight you can use large you can use smaller it's entirely up to you um, so that would work um, but for this project I've used the eight millimeter smoky quartz now as for tools okay so Obviously, you need your wire cutters. Uh, as I said, I quite like the fine tipped cutters here. Um, they work really well to get in, into the uh, the small corners where the wires are hard to reach. So I would recommend to have a pair of um, ultra fine flush cutters. Then you're going to need your bale making pliers. This is for the bale. We're going to bend um, the bale around the, the bottom end. Uh, specifically for the actual wires at the end but i'll show you when we get to that and then rather than your normal chain nose pliers i like to have my bent nose pliers for this project because it actually really helps to get um the weaves pushed together um i'll show you also you will see what i'm talking about once we get started with the project um and that's all we need so let's get started Okay, so to do this pendant, we're going to need to start with the base, which uh, is this section here. And it's going to look something like this. Now, this is uh, one of my favorite weaves. I'm going to hold it up and hope that the camera shows you. Uh, I think it's really pretty um, and it looks really nice. You can actually leave it just as is. Um, but when you remove the sections in between, it gives you a rather nice effect. Okay, so I'm going to start by showing you how to make this. Now, I have used five base wires for that, roughly about 25 centimeters long. For the demonstrating the weave, I'm going to go a little bit shorter because um, it's actually easier to, to show you on shorter wire. This is just to show you the weave. So what we're going to need to do is cut five pieces, as I said, my pieces of wire are going to be shorter because um, I'm demonstrating. So I'm going to cut five of my pieces. So that's three, four, and then five. And then what I tend to do is straighten out your wires um, just because it becomes easier to weave and it's much easier to straighten them out now than it is when you are actually weaving and to straighten them out you can kind of bend them in opposing directions this also warms up the wire and gives you and, and softens it a little bit so this is our five as i said remember these are 25 centimeters okay so to do this weave I'm going to pick up my point four, and I'm going to cut a piece off. So now the piece that I have used to create this, okay, so the point four uh, wire is about two meters long, and I start roughly about 10 centimeters out from one end, um, and then weave in the center. So basically the weave needs to be in the center of both ends, because we're going to use either end, to create the bale and also the decorations okay so 
and obviously make sure that you you start you calculate the wire length to one side um so that it actually fits so i would uh, cut it in half and probably start about two thirds in with a long end pointing into the direction that you're actually weaving in okay so i've got my point four and the weave starts so we're going to pick up the first base wire and what we're going to do is wrap it around five times that's one two three four five actually more than that six seven eight okay so i've got eight wraps i'm going to bring in the next wire so maybe kink in the wire right so we're going to do now is we're going to wrap the wire around the top wire once and then we're going to wrap it around a second wire with one loop so now it brings it up so we've wrapped it around the second wire once we're going to bring in the third and what we're going to do now is go around the third wire once come in between two and three and go around the whole thing once so we kind of stepped up the wire so what we need to do now is again go around two and three wrap it and then keep it there we're going to bring in wire number four slide it in and then bring it up and wrap it around wire four once and then bring it down and again go all the way down to the bottom and wrap it around wire number two and bring it up bring in wire number five and this time all we're going to do is go around wire number five what we need to do now is work our way back down so what we're going to do is go around wire number four wrap it once then go all the way to the bottom and wrap it in between wire one and two pull it up and then go in between wire four and five once and remember we need to go once around wire number four oh sorry i'm, I'm doing talking rubbish we've already done a loop so remember we've done one small loop already so we're going to go to, down to wire number three wrap it around wire number three then go in between wire one and two bring it up and then we work our way down so go to the second wire wrap it around it once and now we're going to wrap around wire one and two and this is how the weave looks okay so the next step is to go one two three four five six seven eight okay so there's eight wraps in between so now what's quite important with this weave is we need to flatten it out and that's why i really like these bent nose pliers because it's much easier to actually get hold of the weave itself so i'm going to put this over and make sure it's already finished and what this does it flattens it flattens the weave so we're going to push it together and this is what it looks like you can actually see here there's two loops there really should just be one this is what it looks like so i'm going to hold it up for you to see so there's one little loop in between each okay so obviously you would repeat this so you do eight single wraps in between each little ray and in total we have nine rays that's one two three four five six seven eight nine okay so the next step is we're going to turn it over and just make sure the back looks slightly different to the front so just make sure that you have the front facing up and then the rays pointing down and now we need to shape this now take your time with this um because obviously 0.1 millimeter wire is a heavy gauge so you want to just make sure that you form it nicely so take your time with it 
and just make sure that you have an equal amount on either side now you could already remove the wires if you're going to do a different design in between but i'm going to keep them because i'm going to use the outer wires for a design so we're going to shape this like so You've got these in the center. Obviously, take your time and just make sure that everything is nice and central. So you're going to have these wires on the side. Going to set them aside, and I'm going to use. So bring this back in for reference, okay? So I'm going to use the inside wires, and I'm just going to set aside the weaving wire on each side, and I'm going to twirl these in. And then back up. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Twirl these. And bring these back up. So the next step is to actually do the weaving. Okay. So we're going to take the next two wires in line here and I'm going to pick up my point four from the leftover weaving that we've just done and what I'm going to do now is create two by fives okay and the way this works is we want to make sure that the open spacing is on the wire that's going to go wrapped around the loop so you can see here in this pendant that it's going around and up so we want to make sure that the spacing is actually on the weaving wire that um, that's going to go around the bend if that makes any sense okay so going to start and wrap five times around the top wire so that's one two three four five and then twice around both wires so one two and then continue with that so that's one two three four and this is very repetitive and we're going to be doing this for uh, one two three four five six revolutions okay so we're going to repeat this six times on each side okay so now I have created two sets uh, on either side so there are six sets of two by five weaves on uh, on each of the two central wires on either side okay so we're going to do next is take this weave you can tell here that there's a bit of a spacing between and that's purposefully done so that we can actually take these wires and just wrap them around the already existing loop and that way it kind of shapes the weave and lines it up with what we had previously okay so you can arrange this obviously take your time when you're doing this at home so that it's um all nice and tidy so we're going to do the same on the other side now you can tell i had to remove the the loop on this side because i actually went the wrong way so now i had to go the opposing uh, image of what is on the right hand side okay so we're going to do now is take the weave as well on this side and we are just going to shape it along the existing weave already and then line it up okay so we've got all of this set out and this kind of creates this shape here and I can bring in your pair of pliers and gently arrange if the shape needs changing you want it to be as symmetrical as possible you can set these aside for now so now the next step is you can trim off 
one end or you can just keep it i tend to just keep a lot of wires on there everybody's different a lot of people just cut off the wires and add in new ones i just keep the wires wherever i can because i find it easier just to work with them when they're already existing okay so what we need to do next if you have a look here we've got our bead in the center okay so we need to arrange it and we need to kind of bring up the wire to a point where we can then start weaving the center bit so i'm just going to make sure that these are nice and straight and line up bend these into shape you want to make sure that they sit nicely okay so the next step is to bring in one of our beads leave this here for now and i'm going to take weaving wire and i'm going to create a couple of more loops you're going to have to gauge for yourself just how much you want and where you want the bead to sit so i'm going to bring it up roughly about three or five weaves roughly around about here and what i'm going to do then is pick up my 0.8 bead slide it on and then i'm just going to continue weaving so i'm going to bring the wire underneath and i'm going to wrap it around the wire on the other side go around it once come back and go in between these two wires here and basically what i'm doing is i'm wrapping my weaving wire once around each wire so that's right once so i'm going to bring it back around the top i'm going to go on my on my way back what I'm going to do is go underneath and I'm now starting to wrap from underneath so that the weave looks the same. I'm going to move on to the next one. And now it's a figure of eight weave. You just need to make sure before you start doing this that everything is kind of central so that it looks central. And then what we're going to do is come across so there won't be a gap which is intended so we're just going to wrap once and then we're going to carry on wrapping and just bring this in place you're going to need to have to adjust this push the weave down so that there aren't too many gaps what we're going to do now is weave our way back zigzag back and forth so i'm going to go over the top in between the two and then make sure that you come from underneath up and wrap around then keep doing that so again when we come to the center section there will be a gap that's okay just come in over the top wrap around and then just keep weaving okay so now you keep weaving doing the same thing back and forth until you have something like that so the weave will actually meet in the center and it will create a straight weave like that once they meet okay so i'm going to continue doing that this is roughly about three centimeters long it's going to have to gauge how long you actually want it you can have a nice uh, feature of it if you make it much longer you can have it go up or you can make it a, lot, a little bit shorter if you want a smaller bale so again that's um, personal preference okay so the reason why we have our uh, bale making pliers is because they have uh, the barrels are the same width all the way so if you have for instance your round nose pliers they have a fine tip and then a wide bottom which is not very conducive to create um the sa same size loops okay so what we need to do next here cut off these ends so I'd roughly leave about a centimeter or so depending on what size barrel you are intending to use now put your fingers over the wire so they don't jump around the room like mine just did okay. the amount of times i've actually stepped on wires because i cut them and they flew across the room 
right so the next step is to take i usually go with sort of the second largest and what i'm going to do i'm going to grab the ends and i'm going to bend these backwards before i actually bend the bail and this kind of lines it up with the ends could have gone even a little bit longer um but that will do and then i'm going to take the biggest barrel of my bell making pliers i'm going to use that to shape the actual bell around and that will then create the actual bell itself so that's what it looks like so now the next step is to create two by five weaves on the outside here and again we're going to pick our 0.4 millimeter wire and it's a and in this stage i'd like to have the open spacing on the outside wire so we're going to do is wrap five times around the outer wire one two three four and then five and then bring these nice and close together and then i'm going to go around twice around both wires and then i'm going to repeat so it's five and then two five and then two five and then two and for that roughly recreate about uh, 14 revolutions all right so i'm going to do that on both sides so now do this for, for this side and do it also for the other side okay so i'm going to do that just now and um, i'll see you in a moment right, so now i've done my 14 sets on either side and um, i've just realized that i have used three wires to create the bail rather than the just just the two that i actually did for this pendant so this is going to be a slight variation um we're going to then do the pattern without the wire going around the top but if you want this kind of effect when you're doing the bail just do it with the two inner wires rather than with the three that i just did it for the center all right so what we're going to do now is take this wire and again lay it it's going to be a little bit tough to bend because it's one millimeter wire so we're going to shape it to come towards the center and apply a bit of force so that it kind of lines up we're going to do the same on the other side so just shape it right so i've beaten the wire into submission um okay so now the next step is to actually bend these thicker wires around the frame to keep it in place so now because i've used the wire here at the top inside the bell rather than to go around the curve we're going to slightly change this design i'm going to take these wires and bring them around the outside we're going to create a twirl so i'm going to start with one and bring this wire around the inside so put your finger around the bottom and then bring in your pliers like so and bring this up for now and then follow through with the second wire like that and then just pull and then flatten these out what we're going to do with these we can arrange them you can either use them as a pattern or you can cut them off so i'm going to just arrange them as a little um decor i'm going to do the same on the other side i'm going to flip this over and i'm going to start with one bring it through do the same with the other And then press it down. 
So now we have these arranged and we need to make sure that they are all the same length if we're going to use them for a little bit of detail. So I'm going to trim them down with my cutters to be roughly about the same length to keep everything symmetrical. Make this a little bit shorter as well. Right, so the next step is then to bring in some round nose pliers. I'm going to twirl them. Around the edges. You can see how the twirls have a little bit of a straight edge. Normally I tend to cut this off and we can keep it on. And then I'm just rolling this in and I'm laying it flat. So you can actually arrange these as you wish. Um, so just roll these up and place them um, to your liking. And then once we've done that, we're going to add the beads to the center. Right, so I've arranged the wires the way I want them. So you can do the same with the, the leftover wires that come around the back here. So you just bring them in. And as I said, you trim them down to the same size um, and then lay them out whichever way you like. So the last step is to actually add in um, one of the gemstones. I'm going to use one of those wires. I should have cut them off earlier because they kind of get in the way. I just keep to, I tend to keep all of my wires attached uh, for some reason. Um, a lot of other people just cut them off. I just keep them where they are because I find it easier to bring them in. So the last step is use this wire um, to then feed it through somewhere, anchor it, and then we're going to be using that anchor point to then go through the center and attach one of our rounds again. Now, the way I've arranged the rounds, obviously, again, is um, because I liked the look of that. So if you decide you'd like to put them elsewhere, um, that's entirely up to you. You can dot them whichever way you want. I just thought they look quite nice if they are sort of central. So I'm going to use any old place to feed the point four through where it will fit. Might need to go. A little bit further down and you then just kind of use sections where they are attached and um, that's it so now if you wanted to I think I'm going to actually keep the round sections and if you wanted to create these rays you can have a look here and see how this is created so basically all I've done is come in with my cutters and I've removed the wires so the first three are trimmed off and then slightly pulled out so this is how you get this ray effect but uh, i think it's quite a nice variation to keep the round in so you can do either or um i think they both look quite nice they just have uh, different things going for it so you can decide which version you like better um and that's that so i really hope you enjoyed this uh, let me know and uh, thanks for watching